In this video we're going to study the art in action of the braid group on the free group. So the art in action is an action of the n-strand braid group, Bn, by automorphisms on the free group, Fn. In other words, for each n-strand braid we get an automorphism of the free group, Fn. What's the free group again? It's z star z star z n times. In other words, it has n generators and no relations. So the construction of this action is quite geometric. It's a kind of monodromy. Um, proving it that it is an action that's well defined is a little bit involved. Um, we're not going to get into that. And instead, we'll just work through some examples once I've introduced the action. And, uh, and hopefully we'll come to terms with it. So the two key geometric ingredients are that these two groups, Bn and Fn, arise naturally as fundamental groups of some spaces. So we saw in the last video that the braid group on n-strands is the fundamental group of the unordered configuration space on n points, with a base point being some configuration z. So z here is a collection of points z1, z2, up to zn. The free group, Fn, is the fundamental group of the plane minus a configuration of endpoints. Right, if I cut endpoints out of the plane, whatever I get retracts onto a collection of circles. So here's a configuration of three points in the plane, one, two, three. And if I remove those points, what's left retracts onto this wedge of three circles, using the word circle in the loosest possible sense. So this object has fundamental group Z star Z star Z coming from these three loops. It's a free group on three generators. So in general the N strand, sorry the N generator free group is the fundamental group of the plane punctured at N points. So the way we define the art in action is as follows. We take the space of unordered configurations, which I'm just going to draw as a blob. This is U, C, N. And over this space, we have a family of punctured planes. Right, so at each point in U, C, N, we have a configuration of points in the plane, Z1 up to Zn. And as this point downstairs here moves around in the configuration space, so these n points in the plane move around upstairs. So over a different point maybe we have a different configuration of points. So this is a situation known as a fibration. We have some space that fibers over another space. So one of these spaces is the union of all these punctured planes upstairs. That's called the universal family over the configuration space. And it's projecting down by just remembering the configuration. So the pre-image of a point is a punctured plane. It's the punctured plane that you get by taking the configuration represented by this point in the other configuration space and cutting it out of the plane. So now if I go around a loop in the base like this I get some kind of a monodromy that is a map from this plane, this punctured plane here, back to itself. And I get that by kind of transporting around in this family. I'm not going to make it very precise. It's the same kind of thing that you'd do if you did path lifting, except now instead of being a covering space, this total space here, this universal family, is, is a vibration. So this is not actually important for understanding how the action works, but it's 
how it's defined. So what happens now? Well, this loop downstairs is an element of the braid group. So given a braid, we get such a loop. That gives us a monodromy map from the punctured plane to itself, and that induces a map on fundamental group. Right, that induces a map from the fundamental group of the punctured plane back to itself. And that's what the art in action is. It's that automorphism of the free group on n generators coming from a loop in the base. So rather than going into detail justifying this, let's just look at an example. So we're going to work with the two strand braid group. That's just got one generator, sigma 1, in which the two strands cross over once like this. And we're going to see how this acts on the free group on two generators, which is uh, F2, that's just Z star Z. So we need to give you an automorphism of Z star Z. In particular, I need to tell you where the two generators, let's say A and B, of this free group go. So let's take our two points, uh, Z1 and Z2. What does this braid do to them? Well, you can kind of imagine it picks them up like this, and then it rotates them so that one of them comes around the other and they swap over, like that. So what about the loops A and B? I'm going to need to do these in colour, so let's do uh, A in red and B in blue. Remember these are generators of the fundamental group of the complement of these two points. And you can kind of imagine, if you were to pick up the two points and rotate them in the way we just did, then the um, blue loop would follow this point as it moved around underneath like this and the red loop would follow this point as it went around like this. So um, unfortunately I can't do any kind of computer magic to show that happening so um, let me just move this off slightly to one side and draw the result. So. Here are the two points, they've come back to themselves. The red loop now goes around this point, like this, and back. And the blue loop goes around like this. Alright, so it's a bit of an imagination exercise, but you can see I've kind of taken this loop, pulled it over so it goes around this, and I've taken this loop, pulled it under so it goes around this. So that's what the art in action does, but we need to explain that algebraically in terms of where does A go, where does B go. So in other words, we need to say what is this loop, this blue loop, expressed in terms of A and B? And what is this red loop expressed in terms of A and B? So I claim that this red loop is homotopic to the following loop. It goes up and round, and then up around the other guy, and then back up, backwards around this loop, like this. So all I've done is I've taken this part of the red loop and I pulled it down towards the base point here to get this kind of squirming tadpole shape. And now we can read off what this is. Let me put some arrows on these just to indicate directions. So let's say the loop A is going in this direction and the loop B is going in this direction. So this guy, this new red loop, 
um, is going around A backwards, then around B the right way, and finally around A the right way. So in my back to front notation for writing loops, that is A inverse B A. Okay, so let's move him off up here and let's deal with the blue loop. So if you look at the picture, the blue loop actually is homotopic to the loop that just goes like this. Which, if you compare with our diagram of here where the labels have sadly disappeared, you'll see it's just a copy of A. So the blue loop goes to A. So let's move that over here. So what we are saying is the artin action of the braid sigma 1, considered as a two-strand braid, sends the red loop A to A, B, A inverse, and it sends the blue loop B to A. So you can do any braid this way, it gets a bit cumbersome the uh, longer your braid is. Um, but for example, sigma inverse is not too hard to figure out from this. And if you have several strands, uh, two of them will get switched by one of these sigma i's, and the others will stay the same. So um, the uh, the art in action will only then affect two of the generators of the free group. So it's an exercise to do some more of these yourself. And in the next video, we'll see how the art in action is used uh, together with Van Kampen's theorem to find the fundamental group of the complement of any knot.